Okay. So these are your first few point of discussion. Mean variance analysis framework, but let's let's do some basics. A portfolio means that you would add two or more assets together. So if you have, let's say, a asset with some characteristics A and B, A and B together would be considered as a portfolio. Now, the moment you build a portfolio, the characteristics of the portfolio might be completely different from the characteristics of the individual assets within a portfolio. And mean variance framework helps you identify characteristics of those portfolio with three main parameters. The first parameter is mean. And means, mean simply means expected return out of the individual assets and portfolio. For example, what is the expected return from asset A? What is the expected return from asset B? And what is the expected return of your portfolio? Then second framework that we analyze is variance or standard deviation. So what we would say here is that risk of a stock or risk of a portfolio is measured with variability of its return and that variability is measured with standard deviation. So risk of A would be standard deviation of A, this would be standard deviation of B and risk of portfolio is of course a standard deviation of this portfolio. And the third important framework a third important variable with which we define this framework is covariance or correlation. So the way mean and variance of individual assets is important, what is equally important is how asset A and B behave with each other, which means what is the relationship with asset A and what is the relationship with asset B. So we'll do some basic example first. Assume you have two assets, the amount that you've decided to invest is 5 million and 15 million. The expected return from the asset A is 20% and asset B is 30%. Find out expected return of the portfolio. Twenty-seven. Yes, Sharmila, how much? 27.5. Expected return of the portfolio is 27.5. First step that you will do is find out how much is the weight that has been invested into the portfolio. Total value is 20 million out of which we have invested 5, which is 25% and 75%. And then you would calculate a weighted average. 25 into 20%, this would be 5 and this would be 22 and a half and therefore your weighted average would be 27.5 percent. Next example. Now you have asset A and asset B and again the amount that you've invested is 5 and 15. The risk of this portfolio is 10 percent and the risk of this portfolio let us say is 20 percent. You want to find out what is the risk of the entire portfolio. So now we cannot calculate risk of entire portfolio with this data because individually these assets might be risky. So let's assume that 10% and 20% in a particular market is very high standard deviation. But what generally happens is that when B is increasing, A is falling. And when A is increasing, B is decreasing. And therefore the value of portfolio as a whole is not moving so significantly. And therefore, to calculate the standard deviation of the portfolio, we need one more variable, which is the covariance or correlation. So let me say correlation between this data set is minus one. Now find out what would be the portfolio standard deviation. 
it's good we are revising level 1 Are you sure about Hmm, how much? How much are you getting? 12.5 here? Okay. So those of you who are calculating, there are two ways of dealing with this. The first way, which you should know, but which was not required, is the formula of standard deviation. So weight 1 square, standard deviation 1 square. Weight 2 square, standard deviation 2 square. So this is 1, this is 1, this is 2, this is 2. Plus 2 into weight 1, weight 2, standard deviation 1, standard deviation 2 into correlation coefficient. Right, so let's try solving this method and then we will also do a shortcut for this. This weight was 25% and this weight was 75%. So say 10 into 25% square STO1, 20 into 75% square STO2, 2 into 25 percent into 75 percent into 10 into 20 and use plus minus k to make this negative and store this in the third memory slot then say RCL 1 plus RCL 2 plus RCL 3 and then take a under root of this number and that would come out to be 12.5 now what we know is that correlation can always be or it would always be between minus 1 and plus 1. So a minus 1 means a perfect negative correlation right? and therefore a perfect benefit of diversification. So when you have a negative 1 you can have lowest possible standard deviation that a portfolio can achieve and this 12.5 you could have calculated directly. You could have said 25% into 10 which is 2.5 and 75% into 20 which is 15. 15 minus 2.5 would have given you a direct answer of 12.5. Are we okay here? Calculate portfolio standard deviation when the correlation coefficient now is plus 1. Now it would be 17.5. So when the correlation coefficient is plus 1 we simply calculate a weighted average and we would say 15 plus 12.5 would simply give us 17.5 and calculate correlation coefficient sorry calculate standard deviation when this is 0 15.2 now when this is 0 there is no shortcut so the only way you can solve is by Solving for these two terms because this is anyways going to become zero. So what we are concluding as of now is that if the correlation is negative, automatically it is going to pull down the standard deviation of the portfolio. So once we did this basic analysis, then we moved out to a series of lines and which helped us derive different equations. So let's revise them step by step. The first step in your analysis was that you picked up two assets you said asset A and asset B you had expected return on those assets let's say 10% 15% you have standard deviation of two assets 5% 7% you have correlation coefficient let's assume 0 0.5 then your step number one was to calculate something called as minimum variance frontier so what did we calculate in minimum variance frontier? Yes, what was minimum variance frontier? What did we have on x-axis? 
on x axis we have standard deviation of the portfolio what did we have on y axis expected return and then the shape was like a yes a bullet shaped curve assume this like a bullet shaped curve so this entire graph we call this as minimum variance frontier now why did we call this as minimum variance frontier yes <laughs> yes what we said we defined a return so let's say a return of 7% which is that portfolio which will give me the lowest possible risk for a given level of return minimum variance frontier then we defined the return again said what is that portfolio which will give me lowest possible so in this fashion we drew our minimum variance frontier this is all a part of your syllabus at level 2 so though we are revising but the same story is repeated again at level 2 so this was your step number 1 we drew minimum variance frontier once we had minimum variance frontier then we said that this point here assuming that this is the tip of the bullet this point here would be called global minimum variance portfolio and then what we concluded is that if you are investing somewhere here then for a given risk you are getting le lesser return because the same investor for the same risk can have a substantially higher return and therefore no investor who's rational would like to invest here so the rational investors would always like to invest on this portion of your minimum variance frontier and this portion was called efficient frontier right so what we concluded is that if you have two sets of assets then what portfolio combinations makes maximum sense you do not want to invest into these sets the areas where you want to invest is these sets are we clear so this was your <coughs> step number 1 minimum variance frontier step number 2 global minimum variance portfolio and step number 3 efficient frontier once you have efficient frontier then you decided to introduce a risk free asset and you said that now we want to invest some risk some amount into risky portfolio and some amount into risk free asset so then we had next set of graph now this is your efficient frontier we chose one portfolio which was risky portfolio here now that we've clubbed rfr or risk free asset we will have new set of portfolio combinations like this at this point 100% of my portfolio assume this to be tangent 100% of my portfolio is invested into risky asset and therefore my risk return metric is exactly same as what that risky asset would have offered me what was the risk of risky asset and the expected return of risky asset if i am invested on the this part of efficient frontier then this portfolio would be called as a borrowing portfolio the reason being that you have invested more than 100% into the risky asset by borrowing some amount at risk free return and if i am invested at this part of this line then i am at a lending portfolio so this particular line was called as capital allocation line and this capital allocation line had an equation equation of this line was expected return is equal to and now at level 2 it will make all the more sense because you have studied regressions right so this regression has a intercept and that intercept is here that is what rfr, RFR. so expected return is equal to rfr plus now tell me what is the slope of this line what is the slope of this line the slope of this line is sharp ratio of risky portfolio right for every unit of standard deviation how much extra return is given over and above rfr so we will say return on risky asset a minus rfr divided by standard deviation of risky asset a and if you want to find out expected return on portfolio p we will have to multiply this with risk that we are willing to take here and therefore multiplied with 
standard deviation of portfolio P. This was your equation for capital allocation line. And then we had different sets of questions. Given risk, how much return? Given return, how much risk? Given return, what portion in what portfolio? Given risk, what portion in what portfolio? Four types of questions. The same questions again we have to solve at level 2. Should we move on? Once you did your capital allocation line, then you've moved on the chain and you simply changed one assumption and now you said that this risky portfolio is your market portfolio. And the moment you made that assumption, then the same line became capital market line. And capital market line had similar equation. Expected return on portfolio P is equal to RFR plus return on market minus RFR divided by standard deviation of market M which is nothing but sharp ratio of market multiplied with standard deviation of portfolio P. And the last line in the series so after some discussion about risk, what we figured out was that standard deviation reflected total risk. And total risk means it includes the unsystematic component and also the systematic component. So an investor should be given risk only for the systematic risk and therefore now on x-axis instead of having standard deviation we are going to have beta. And we are going to have a similar line. But this time this line would be called as security market line and of course the equation for security market line is RFR plus return on market minus RFR divided by beta of market into beta of risky stock P return on stock P and of course what we know is that beta of market is always one and therefore this need not be written explicitly. So we can convert this entire analysis uh, you know, for, for the sake of simplicity and easy uh, remembering we, into one single page. So your step number one is to have minimum variance frontier. Step number two is to identify global minimum variance portfolio. Step number three, once you identified the part above that is efficient frontier. Step number four, once that has been identified, then add that with risk-free asset and have a line and call that line as capital allocation line with an equation of expected return is equal to RFR plus return on asset minus RFR divided by standard deviation of asset to standard deviation P. Then step 5 change one assumption and make that line as capital market line with the same equation and step number 6 have a line which would be called secret.